Good morning, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, my name is Aaron Cuny, and I'm head of school here at Ingenuity Prep. And on behalf of my co-founder, Will Stetzer, and all of the Ingenuity Prep community, uh, we are excited to welcome you here this morning. Uh, we are grateful to be your hosts. <clears throat> Two and a half years ago, in partnership with Building Hope and UDC, we opened our doors here in the PR Harris Building to serve the kids and families of Ward 8 and Southeast DC. We opened our doors with the belief that all kids deserve the opportunity to receive a truly excellent education. We opened our doors with the belief that when the adults get it right, kids can truly succeed. And we opened our doors knowing the context that the families here in Bellevue and Fort Washington have historically had among the fewest opportunities for quality educational seats of anywhere in the city. Since we opened our doors, our board, staff, students, and families have worked tremendously hard to make this school a special place. And now we're seeing that work begin to pay off. Despite having the nearly the highest at-risk rate of any public charter school in the city, our school community is beginning to show what's possible. Several weeks ago, the Public Charter School Board released performance management framework data for the last school year. Ingenuity Prep was the only school in the city to meet the Public Charter School Board's target benchmarks in each domain of early childhood classroom quality and in early elementary reading and math progress. We're <clears throat> We're proud of this growth, but we believe that this is only the beginning. <clears throat> the work of building great schools is really hard. Truly doing right by our kids, by all of our kids, is no small task. But that work could be made even more difficult by those outside of the walls of the school building, um, by the policymakers who craft and guide the agenda of much of our work. But that is not the case here in DC. I feel truly blessed to be a school leader here in DC, <clears throat> in a city where because of the community investment and support, because of the policy climate, because of city leadership, we are put in a position to succeed. <clears throat> we can tackle the challenges that we encounter within the walls of this school building because of that support, because of that city leadership, we can be set up to succeed and tackle those challenges with the flexibility that we need, the flexibility that we know is important to creating the innovators and problem solvers that make for successful organizations. As a school leader here in DC, I rarely feel like there is anything outside the walls of our school building that prevents us from tackling the challenges that our school community faces. And so for that, for that support, um, on behalf of our kids and families, I'd like to thank everyone here in the building um, who supports the work that we do. And um, with that, I would like to welcome a friend of Ingenuity Prep, um, our mayor, Muriel Bowser. Thank you. Well, good morning, everybody. Good morning. I am happy to be here at Ingenuity Prep. And I'm sitting next to Tyrese, and I think she's happy to be here too. Let's acknowledge all the boys and girls. And I, I am always happy to be here in Ward 8. Uh, just yesterday, I, I was a part of the 500 for 500. I hope everybody knows what that is. Uh, that's where people are signing up to help young readers learn how to read even more. And I have a mentee, uh, and I was with uh, Tyler yesterday at Malcolm X, uh, and I had my training to be a tutor. I went out to be a tutor, uh, and I'm looking forward to spending a lot of time with, uh, with Tyler in the weeks ahead, um, helping to improve his reading. So that is one activity that we've been focused on during, what is it this week? Education Week in Washington, D.C. Uh, and it's great to be here at Ingenuity Prep for some other very exciting announcements around education. Uh, so let me uh, 
thank all of the board members, staff, and students here at Ingenuity Prep. Uh, let me acknowledge the president of the Public Charter School Board, Darren Woodruff, and all the board members. Give them a round of applause. Uh, you're going to be hearing from the Deputy Mayor for Education, Jennifer Niles, and uh, the President of UDC, Ronald Mason. Give them a round of applause. And let me also recognize Scott Pearson, who you're here from, who runs the Public, ed the public Charter School um, Board, uh, staff, executive director of the Public Charter School Board. I'll get it right. Uh, Scott, and you'll hear from him a little bit later as well. Uh, so we have been talking all week, uh, not just this week, however, every day and every week of our administration about how we will continue investments um, in, our, in our children and in our public schools. Uh, we've been recruiting volunteers to mentor young men of color. Uh, we talked a, a little bit earlier in a week about our school that we will open, uh, focused on improving outcomes for boys, and it will open this fall at the former Ron Brown School. Uh, we announced yesterday that we will be extending the school year for students in underserved communities. <laughs> So going from 180 days of instruction to 200 days of instruction, and one, one thing I see about Ingenuity Prep is that that is already part of the program. Uh, yesterday, I was with Council Member Allen uh, to talk about another initiative that the district is invested in, and that's Books from Birth, uh, where children and families will be able to sign up to build their home libraries from birth. Uh, and already the DC Public Libraries has started I, what they call the soft lunch, and already 3,000 families have signed up. There are 5,000 slots, so sign up now uh, in, in books from birth. And I am also very delighted to be here to, to with uh, President Mason, who is going to have a very exciting announcement ab about UDC. Uh, so Ron, how long have you been there now? About six months? About six months. Um, go in, he has a lot of work to do, right? Uh, and he has a lot of partners to make sure that that work gets done. I was with President Mason recently for the opening of the Student Center. Uh, his staff has been working very hard with my staff on budget uh, initiatives for UDC. Uh, and now we're in this beautiful building uh, at PR Harris, which has been the home to one of UDC's programs um, for the last several years. And so now Ron wants to come up and tell you about some exciting things happening at UDC and some new exciting things to come. Ron Mason. Uh -huh. uh, thank you all. Um, you know, we're fortunate in the district to have one system of public education that is owned and operated by the district, and it goes from preschool all the way through law school. Um, and under the mayor's leadership, you'll find that we're starting to collect the, connect the dots, connect the pieces of that system more and more over time and we'll have closer ties between the K-12 components, which are the DCPS and DC uh, charter schools, and your higher education institution, which is the University of the District of Columbia. Uh, so we want to announce today the beginning of what we think will be a growing program uh, to tie us closer to the K-12 component, and that is something we're calling DC Up, uh, which is the District of Columbia University Partnership. And as the first phase of that partnership, the University of the District of Columbia is going to automatically admit and offer full scholarships and a housing stipend to every valedictorian and salutatorian that graduates from DC public schools and DC public charter schools. And over time, this uh, program will expand in some form to every graduate of every public high school in the district. Uh, so having said that, uh, we're happy to do our part, and we feel fortunate uh, to have an opportunity to be a part of such a great public education system.
we should have Education Week every week with announcements like that. That is great news for for our residents. Uh, and not only is it represent a, a pathway to higher education, we know when we can talk about saving families money, it's a real representation of a pathway to the middle class for, for those families. Uh, that is a real impact on the bottom line for families in the District of Columbia. If your student finishes top, full ride to the University of the District of Columbia. And so that is a great incentive. And I want to congratulate UDC for that. Give them another round of applause. And so we are also here at PR Harris to talk about um, public buildings and to talk specifically about uh, school buildings. And as you know, uh, we have been engaged in, in all you for the last several months in looking at how we can best use our school buildings for schools. Uh, and I'm very happy uh, to make several announcements about uh, school buildings today. Uh, so many will not know that this building right now uh, has a multi multiplicity of uses. Uh, and we want to make sure that it's very clear that public charter schools will be able to locate here uh, and to grow here. UDC and the fire and emergency services will also remain here, um, but PR Harris can accommodate a lot of, uh, a, a lot of growth uh, and uses. And so today I'm pleased to announce that this facility uh, will go out for solicitation for more charter school applicants. And that's very good news uh, for school children and school families all across the district. And that's not all. Uh, we will also put out for a solicitation a public building uh, in Ward 5, and that is the Keene School. Uh, we always called it the Keene School. I grew up right around uh, this school, uh, and we are very happy uh, to be able to put that out for solicitation as well. We are also announcing an award. Uh, we are awarding the MC Terrell School in Congress Heights um, to the Charter School Incubator Initiative. Uh, which we which will deliver uh, high quality school uh, education option for high school for high school education and uh, right here in Ward Eight. In addition, uh, the MC Ter to at the MC Terrell Annex uh, at their MC Terrell School, the community college prep program will occupy the annex at MC Terrell, providing several critical adult education programs beginning this fall, which means 450 Ward 8 residents will have direct access to adult education right in their own neighborhood. So those, that is good news for the District of Columbia. So I hope you recognize that we are fully uh, committed to accelerating the pace of public education reform, not just this week, uh, but every week. And we are uh, so encouraged by the partnerships that we have around uh, this room and so encouraged by the efforts that Deputy Mayor Niles is leading so that every public school dollar that we spend, whether it's in traditional schools or in our public charter schools, all of which our taxpayers pay for is being leveraged um, for the best, best effect uh, for D.C. families and students. So uh, with that, I want to introduce our Deputy Mayor, Jenny Niles. Thank you, Mayor Bowser. Um, it is such a treat to be here. And, and when I look up and see all of these wonderful faces in the room, um, Education Week has been an adventure. And I have to say, I'm a little bit glad it's Friday. <laughs> We, um, we have had lots of exciting things happen this week, um, and I think that um, in many ways this is topping off the week um, uh, very personally for me um, because of the two announcements that we're making today. Um, getting to work with President Mason and learning about UDC, um, since I was a leader of a pre-K through 12 school, I was not yet um, fully versed in all of the higher ed. It has been a treat and a pleasure to, um, to understand more about UDC and and figuring out how to support it. Um, and what do we do? But we have UDC turning right around and supporting our um, K to 12. And so that um, 
President Mason referred to this, but we're really trying to build a team um, across pre-K to 12 uh, and including all the way, should we call it pre-K to 24? Because it's not just 16, right? Because it's all the way through law school. So, um, so this continuum of learning um, uh, is going to be critical for making sure that every one of our residents has a pathway to the middle class. Um, the other thing, of course, I'm very um, excited about is the fact that we are having three buildings in our um, city turn into long-term homes for public charter schools. Um, even though the buildings have had school, charter schools in them, because of the way that we'd structured it, those charter schools were not sure how long that they would get to be there. And so with this announcement today, we're changing that. And what is, I think, also exciting about this building is, is that UDC will continue to be in this building. FEMS will continue to be in this building. And so this small change will not uh, affect the workings of the building, but it will allow for our charter schools to be able to make capital investments um, to improve the building as well. Um, and uh, I could not be um, more excited that we're ending this week with finding charter schools homes. Definitely thank you to those folks who are here, both from the Public Charter School Board and from the board, um, the boards themselves of the schools and the supporters. Um, and then, of course, we have our students. And the whole reason that we do all this work uh, and the whole reason that I get up every morning is that I get to think of what it means for you guys, hopefully, to be able to come to a school that is where you want to be at school, that's giving you a rigorous education, preparing you for universities. And so that now you have a way that you know if you work really hard, you can have a free ride all the way through college. Um, so with that, I'd like to turn and welcome a colleague and friend up here, Scott Pearson, the Executive Director of the Public Charter School Board, to offer some remarks as well. Thank you, Jenny. Um, so what makes a good school? For most of us, we think of students hard at work, of teachers skillfully leading a classroom, of dedicated and committed leadership. And all of that is so important, but there's something else that every school needs, and that is a building to house the students and the teachers and the school leaders. Ideally, a building that was built to be a school. Many of our charter schools have found innovative ways to turn warehouses and church basements into schools. And while we applaud their creativity and their scrappiness, the, the fact is, is that far too many charter schools are still educating students in buildings that were not meant to be schools. So today's announcement is an important step. Um, there are four charter schools currently in the three buildings that um, are the subject of this announcement. Ingenuity Prep, National Collegiate Prep, Somerset, um, and DC Bilingual, plus Community College Prep. So all of those schools have an opportunity to bid for these buildings, and if successful, go from a year-to-year -year lease where there's all this uncertainty to being knowing that they have a home for the future. That allows them to plan. It allows them to, as Jenny said, make investments in improving the facility, um, and it, most of all, gives them the space to focus on what's most important, which is, which is running a great school and outstanding teaching and learning. Letting public charter schools occupy unused buildings is a good thing. It removes a neighborhood blight, it saves the city maintenance money, and it generates lease money for the city. Most importantly, it assures that more children and families have access to choose the school that is the right fit for their child. So I want to thank you, Deputy Mayor Niles, and most of all, I want to thank you, Mayor Bowser, for making this happen and for your leadership in this. Thank you very much. All right. So thank you for that, Scott, and I want to thank everybody who has been able to come out and celebrate with us. I also want to recognize all the school leaders. I, I, I just met Aaron, and I see Connie Spinner here. Do we have any other of the school leaders here? I'm here. Okay, D.C. Bilingual is here. Somerset Prep, Somerset Prep is here. 
National Collegiate Prep. So um, please uh, join me in saying hi to, to all of these folks. I know that they're uh, anxious uh, to get the process started and to, to find a long-term uh, home uh, for, for their schools. And so we're very, very proud of that. Uh, let me also, we've been joined by uh, a great friend and leader in Ward 8 and supporter of children period. Uh, and so I want to acknowledge uh, the Ward 8 Council Member LaRuby May. Good morning. Good morning. And welcome to Ward 8. <laughs> the great Ward 8. You know, uh, one of the things I try to do when I speak is say Ward 8 as many times as I possibly can say Ward 8. Uh, but but good morning to, to everyone, to to our mayor and our great leader, Mayor Bowser, my friend, uh, Deputy Mayor Niles, to President Mason, to Mr. Pearson, and to everyone, uh, very uh, specifically to our young scholars who are with us this morning. I'm happy here to join you uh, to talk about the, these two initiatives that will foster great educational opportunity for children in the District of Columbia. As a proud graduate of the David A. Clark School of Law at the University of the District of Columbia, you know, I'm honored to see and to be a part of the next generation of leaders that will come from UDC, the, the, the scholarship initiative where students will be rewarded for their hard work uh, creates a pathway to, to excellence and a life-changing experience. Um, Opening up Mary Church 12, uh, well, Mary Church 12 is already open. We already have the schools in there, but having this opportunity to make sure that the families and children in Ward 8 have options. Options where we're going to make sure that we hold their leaders and we hold the charter school board accountable to making sure that those opportunities are ones that we're looking to bridge the gap, the disparity gap between black children and white children and poor children across this city. Um, I think that this initiative and the leadership of Deputy Mayor Niles under the leadership of Mayor Bowser really speaks to her commitment to Ward 8 to our children, and to education. And thank you all very much. Have a good morning. And finally, uh, Darren, I know we, we, this might be putting you on the spot, but uh, we we want to recognize you on your leadership of, of the board. Uh, and that's not always easy. So when you're mayor, you get to call Washingtonians and say, hey, I have a great opportunity for you to serve the city. Would you be interested? Uh, and so many people say yes. I can't believe it. Uh, we have 1,800 very important spots on boards and commissions across the city um, and we're very grateful to Washingtonians who can make some time out of their regular day their regular jobs and their families to provide leadership and Darren you're one such leader so please you please close out the program <laughs> Um, hello, everybody. Good morning. Uh, let me just say thank you again. It's, it's really amazing and wonderful to have such a partner in city government for all of education with the mayor, with the deputy mayor. These are folks that I've worked with, um, I think, before they came to these positions and now that they're here. And we are really seeing um, a renaissance for education in the district. And I think I'll just end it by noting the wonderful programs, Ingenuity Prep, um, DC Bilingual, Somerset, National Collegiate, these are all fantastic um, schools for, for kids both here in Ward 8 and outside of Ward 8 that I think are offering wonderful instructional programs um, that otherwise wouldn't be here. So I would just encourage you, as long as you're here, to take advantage, go take a look at National Collegiate. They have a wonderful international program. We have blended learning going on here. We have uh, language immersion at DC Bilingual and college prep going on at uh, Somerset. So we're just grateful as a charter board. Uh, we definitely do this for, for the students and some of them you see here. And we think this is just another step towards making DC really a shining example of public education. So thank you thank for you. having me up. I appreciate it. Thank you. Okay. Thank you everybody. Thanks everybody.